morning. Boy, it's good to be back in Archer. Did you guys get a little whiff of snow or something? We didn't get nothing in Sheldon. Boy. Luann wants a blizzard. We always like one blizzard every year, one big blizzard. So we're praying for it, so if it comes, you can blame her, all right? <laughs> She's already sorry she came with me today. <laughs> but she asked me, she said, how long has it been since I was able to come? But God's keeping her busy, and she's playing at three different churches uh, around the area and, and leading worship. And so she had the day off, and I'm working, so she gets to sit and rest. And last week, it was the opposite. She had to work and play, and I w went and listened to her. And uh, we'll see. We'll talk afterwards, see which one enjoyed the service better. <laughs> but it's good to be back with you. Good to be here in God's house to worship together. And uh, when I got the call, I was, to tell you the truth, I was kind of looking forward to it. And uh, it's been a couple of weeks which is unusual since I've preached. I hope I haven't uh, got too rusty on that. But let's join together in our call to worship. Oh, come, let us sing to our God and make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us lift up our hearts and voices in joy and thanksgiving for being here together in the presence of our beloved God. Come, let us worship this amazing God, for we belong to him. Help us listen for God's word and live in the hope that it inspires. Stand with me if you would. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. Let's remain standing and sing hymn number two. Oh, that's right. Community first, right? Oh, man. I forget the greeting. Hi, good morning. God bless you. How are you doing today? Hi. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Jessica. Good morning. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Oh. Now. Now you can remain standing as we sing Standing on the Promises. You better not sit down for that one.
hear this prayer of confession this morning. Patient and ever faithful God, we come to you this morning, confessing that we can be a grumpy and unsatisfied people. When things are not perfect in our eyes, we murmur and complain and grumble and doubt. We lose hope in the people around us, and even worse, we lose hope in you. We challenge instead of accept. We put to the test rather than trust your caring love. Forgive our doubts and complaining. Forgive our loss of hope. Let your healing, life-giving waters pour over us. Restore our souls. Amen. Amen. And hear these words of encouragement. Our hope is assured. Rest in God's unfailing love and forgiveness. Open your hearts and minds and souls that the healing waters of God's never-ending love and forgiveness may flow into and over you. Know that in this love and forgiveness you have encountered the living God. Amen. Great words of insurance for us today. Let's sing together, Revive Us Again. Okay. Uh, announcement time. You can look in your bulletin. You probably know more about them than, than I do, but remember there's a sign up sheet in the kitchen if you would like to help with Sunday morning coffee time. Uh, boy, you can't forget that. That's, that's a very important time for you, isn't it? On the way over here, do they have good treats? I said, yes, they do. <laughs> the, you wouldn't want to be in the car on the way home today. <laughs> and the book club meeting is Monday, February 26th. Keep that in mind. Love Inc. has needs. You can see that in your bulletin. Uh, spring is in the air, which means Stores are having great sales for winter coats, and we have the coats for kids. I know the Brethren churches have already bought 30-some, and so uh, it's a good time to buy the coats if you, if you uh, want to donate that, and that's been a tremendous uh, benefit and help uh, of the Sheldon Ministerial. Uh, you have the Scott Stallman uh, Family Benefit. It's Monday, February 26th from 5 to 7 at the Lutheran Church in Sheldon. Free will offering, so you can help support that. And, of course, we have our Christian Unity Service uh, at the Pavilion in Sheldon this afternoon at 2 o'clock. There will be a choir singing of uh, people from different churches and joined together. 
And so come out and enjoy our, our annual unity. Community unity, they used to call it. But they, they've kind of changed that title a little bit. Any other announcements that need to be shared? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Any others? Oh, yes. Prayers for strength and energy for both of us to keep getting out and we get tomorrow. Okay. You'll be in our prayers. Okay. I'll write that down so I don't forget it. We'll pray for that in just a second. What's your first name? Wes. 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 Luann says I'm hard of hearing. Wes, is that what I heard? Oh, okay. I'm not that bad. Okay. And you, you can see in your bulletin, prayer requests, for Galen and Karen and Barb, Steve, Sheila, Sarah, Franny, Levi, Michelle's brother, Gary. I know some of them. I think I prayed for Gary the last time I was here. I remember that. And so we keep him in our prayers as well. And of course, uh, let's keep our your pastor in mind, Pastor Milt, as a uh, He's going through this time of loss and, and grief. And uh, are they in Michigan? Is that where the funeral is in Michigan today? Okay. Let's keep them for, as well for traveling mercies. Oh, yeah, Holland, Michigan. And uh, pray that God will just minister and bless, bless them. Any other prayer requests? Okay, Lord, we just come before you. First of all, we want to give you praise. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. Because, first of all, who you are. The creator of all things. The Lord of all. The king of kings. All these titles. Lord, sometimes we just say without really realizing what we're saying. But, Lord, we just lift you up today. We just want to say a simple thank you for who you are but Lord we also want to give you praise and honor and glory for what you've done how you've blessed how you cared for how you walked through uh, with us through different times of sorrow you're that constant help your constant companion that constant friend and Lord we want to just take a moment and just say thank you. Thank you for being there. And Lord, the hope that we have of you'll always be there. And then the greater hope they have that one day we will be with you throughout eternity. Lord, we just praise your holy name right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see this prayer list. You see these people who have requested prayer, who are in need of prayer. Lord, I pray that you will minister to each one of those needs individually. I may not know the ex exact need, but you do. And you know how to take care of them in that situation. Some of them, it may just be a question. It may be something they're, they're struggling with. Maybe it's a physical thing. Whatever need, Lord, I just pray you're a personal Savior. I pray that you will come down and minister to personally to each and every one of them. Lord, I pray for Wes as he goes through the surgery tomorrow. Lord, give him peace tonight. Give him peace tomorrow. Just be with the doctors through the procedure. Just bless. And Lord, let there be no glitches whatsoever. Lord, we just trust you in this situation. It may not be a major surgery, but Lord, we just rest in you in this, in this operation tomorrow. And Lord, we pray for Pastor Milt and his family at the loss of his mother. Lord, I pray that you'll just wrap your loving arms around them, bring 
hope and comfort to them at this time. Lord, it's a time of sorrow, but we as Christians, it's, it's a temporary sorrow because one day we know we will see them again, that we will be with them throughout eternity if they know the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. And Lord, what, if, what, what better cure is there for our grief than the knowledge of that in our life? So Lord, I just pray that you will minister to them, that you, through this time, I pray for your hand of safety as they travel, just be with them in a special way. Lord, for maybe there's a need here this morning that wasn't spoken, and it's just something on someone's heart. Lord, I pray that you will speak to them right now, because you, <laughs> you know the unspoken needs, and you know how to take care of them. Lord, we pray for this service. We pray for the remainder of the service. We just place it in your hands. Just minister to us by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Join with me as we pray the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can rejoice. It's offering time. That's a part of worship, people. Giving to the Lord. Did the ushers come? Okay, I go to different churches. They have different <laughs> ways of doing it. The ushers come forward now or during the song or when? Now? Do I pray before or after? Okay. I should have asked that before the service. Okay, would the ushers come and you're going to sing, I Surrender All.
And Lord, I just want you to know how much we love you. In this action today, in our giving, it shows a little bit, just part of our love back to you. The love not only for you, but for your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you'll take every penny of this offering and use it for your honor and glory. Let it meet the needs of this congregation. I pray that you'll continue to bless them as they continue to support your work here on earth. Lord, just bless every dollar multiplied to meet the need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. My text this morning, I, I'm going to preface something. I uh, was thinking about the service last week, and, and I was in my office, and I had written a couple of notes and just getting started on the idea of what, was, what the Lord wanted for the service. And I took a break. I think it was time to eat or something. And a lot of times I watch something on YouTube. I turn to YouTube while, I, while I'm eating. Uh, if I'm by myself there. And uh, something came on that sparked a good memory that I had. And it was a football play. One play back a few years ago. And that play just sparked something else for the sermon today. So this, this sermon was started, but it really got started because of watching one football play, okay? But my text is found in the 20th chapter of Acts, and this is when Paul was sharing his last words before he left, uh, departed to share them with the Christians in Troas, and I'm just going to read three verses of what he said, starting with verse 22, and see now, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But more of these things, but none of these things, I'm sorry, none of these things move me, nor do they count as my life. Let me read that again. I'm trying to turn the page, find my page, and I lost my place. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. Lord, I just pray that you will minister through your servant this morning. Let the word say, said, be your words, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's Super Bowl Sunday, people. I don't know about you, but I still, I'll admit, I enjoy watching the game. I know a lot of faults and, and a lot of things, but I still enjoy watching the game. Not the halftime. <laughs> you know what? I will turn the halftime off and watch a commercial on another channel. I mean, I refuse to watch that, but the game itself I really enjoy, and I'm rooting for, <laughs> you think I'm going to say that? I'll, I'll alienate someone, I'm sure, but I'm rooting for a team, and I'm rooting really hard for that team. Uh, I'm really, I asked a friend, I said, yesterday, I said, Dennis, you think uh, it's right to pray for the game? He says, uh... But over the years, I've really enjoyed, and especially four Super Bowls that I've enjoyed. Four of them stick out more than any other ones. Of course, three of them is when the Washington Redskins won. Those games, were, they were the best, you know? But the other one, I might alienate someone now with this one, but the other game that I especially enjoyed was the Patriot Seahawks when the Seahawks lost. That one play, and that's the one I saw on TV this week, that one play, and oh, I almost stood up and cheered for that, and I knew what was going to happen. 
But I want you to think about this. The Seahawks were on the one-yard line, the Patriots' one-yard line, four points behind. All they needed was a touchdown. There was about 20 seconds left. And they had one timeout, first and 10 on the one. Their running back had been, they couldn't stop them all day. I mean, any time they needed even five yards, they gave it to the running back. Every time, he just bust through the line. No problem at all. And Pete Carroll, bless his heart. I have never been a Pete Carroll fan after what he did to his college team and how he left his college team. I, I'm sorry, I just cannot root for a Pete Carroll team. Pete Carroll, in his wisdom, they had, they had at least, they could run at least three plays in that time with a timeout. Easily. But in his wisdom, he called a pass play. <laughs> and the pass was intercepted. It was intercepted. Oh, it was great. It was great. And, and to even twist the knife a little bit more, it was intercepted by a rookie who had only started one regular season game in that whole year. I mean, he only started in one game. He was in there because of an injury. And it was his only interception he had in his career. Man, everything. He was undrafted. I mean, he wasn't supposed to be even playing. I went to Google. And I found out during that season, there were 109 passes attempts from the one yard line or closer. In the whole season, 109. <laughs> and that was the only one intercepted. <laughs> I mean, it just made my day. <laughs> when all the dust was settled, the words of Gomer Pyle, I mean, did, I really, we were with some people, and the words of Gomer Pyle, Pyle came to my mind at that time. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Everybody in the stadium was surprised that they didn't run it, number one. Number two, surprised at interception. Ah. I'm almost excited now. You know, in football, you just never know. The unexpected can happen at any moment. Things can be going your way, and all of a sudden, boom. On that day, it was jubilation for my team. And it was despair for the other team. And Lord forgive me, I'm, on, I'm on living this grace with this statement. <laughs> I loved when they put the camera on Pete Carroll. I loved that sick look on his face. <laughs> okay, Lord, we'll move on. You know, everybody in the stadium, when they came up to the line, everybody knew the game was over. They would give it to the running back. He would plow through and there'd be no time left for the Patriots. <laughs> Brady and Pelichek, they, they put a camera on him, on those two, by, and they had their head down. They knew it was over. I was already moaning and groaning and mourning the loss. I thought it was over, but boom, just in an instant. The final score, Patriots 28, <laughs> Seahawks 24. I've got that written, highlighted on my notes here. You know, unexpected things. There's always good and always will be bad, unexpected things that happen in our life continually. Why? Because we don't know tomorrow. We don't know down the road. Now, let's get spiritual. If you look at the several previous chapters before our text, you'll see that Paul was having an excellent ministry. Everywhere he was going, people were getting saved, people were getting healed, people were getting delivered. Churches were being established. Those churches were growing by leaps and bounds. They were coming to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Things were going great for Paul. His ministry was on the top plane of, of his day. God was using him in a special way. But here God is calling him to Jerusalem going to Jerusalem 
That was a deadly place, place for Paul. The people didn't even want him to go there. Every place he went, don't go, don't go. Why? Because there was dangers. The, the Jewish leadership was out to destroy him, out to get him. They wanted him out of the picture completely. But he knew, he knew in his heart, no matter what advice. I mean, it's good to listen to people and take advice and everything, but he knew in his heart that God wanted him to go and that he must go, no matter what the cost was. God had a purpose. God had a reason. And maybe even in his mind, he had the thought, you know, God has protected and delivered me so many times from my enemies. So why can't he do it again in this particular case? No matter what his thinking was, he knew that he knew that he knew that he was supposed to go to Jerusalem. See, his, his number one concern was not the great success. It wasn't even his safety. His concern was to follow God's spirit, do what God told him to do, do what God wanted him to do, where he wanted him to do it. And he was willing to follow wherever the Lord led. I like the phrase he used, that I may finish my race with joy. And when you look at that and do a little study on that phrase, it has the thought of complete spiritual fulfillment. You know, people want to be fulfilled all the time. They're talking about this is this is, I'm fulfilled in doing this. Oh, I just love. No, his desire was to be spiritually fulfilled. And that only comes as you follow God step by step by step. And he, he was willing to do that. His main desire was to complete the work that God had for him to do. And that begs a question from each and every one of us. What is our main desire? What is first and foremost in our life? I hope it's to please God, like the Bible tells us that we're to do. Will this please God? Am I pleasing God? Am I doing what God wants me to do? Am I living the way God wants me to be, live? And we need to think about that. We need to keep that stored in our mind. What is our main desire? You know, when we're obedient to God, when we're sold out to Him completely, when we're putting the kingdom first, when we're trusting Him, with all our heart. And by the way, that's a whole lot easier said than done. Oh, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. But it's hard to put into practice. But when we do all that, then when the unexpected things come in life, and they will come. When they come, they won't get us off course. They won't throw us for a loop because we're trusting God. You brought me this far. Lord, you're going to get me through this situation as well. And unexpected stuff comes. Things don't always work out the way that we think. Paul was telling the people in, in his talk to them that he was totally in the dark about his future. He didn't know what was going to happen in Jerusalem once he got there. But at the same time, he knew who held the future. He didn't know the purpose even for going but he knew that God had a purpose and he was willing to go. None of us know what's going to happen. You know, Proverbs 27, 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what a day may bring. And James even adds to that. James 4, 13, he expands on it. Come on, come now. You say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city. We'll spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. We have our plans. Life may be good. Life may be going well. And, and we're just praising God and going along. I love the life I live in Christ. I, I, I do. I enjoy the life I live. But life is uncertain. And just like that football game, it can change on a dime. I want to give an illustration. I remember a couple of years ago, I was here and I, I, on Father's Day, and I gave my dad's testimony, how God changed his heart. I've got an illustration that I think fits in real well, once again, using my dad. He was a hard worker. 
I mean, he's a big man, strong as an ox. He could, he could do just about anything. His business was booming. I mean, in five short years, it was unbelievable how he moved up the ladder. He had his own business. He was a one-man show, but it was just booming, and, and the future looked so bright. It, it was great. He had just built a brand new house. Mostly he did it himself. We had a nice house in Calverton, Virginia. He had two wonderful kids. <laughs> well, one of us was good anyhow. We had just moved into the house just months before. He had just bought, I'll, I'll never forget, man, he it was, it was beautiful. If you like old cars, he had just bought my mother a brand new Oldsmobile fully loaded. Oh, man, she rode around town with pride in that thing. Things were going well. He, he was 34 years old, just a young man, 34 years. He had the world by the tail. One day he got a call and he left just like he'd done hundreds of times before. For some reason, he took my mom's car instead of his work car. He took off with that one-month-old car. And he headed for that, car, that call, just an ordinary, routine situation. He wasn't gone 10 minutes. Knock on our door. And the guy says, George has just been hit by a train. And it doesn't look good. And it wasn't good. He spent a couple of weeks in intensive care whether he's going to live or die. I mean, it was, it was a scary time. Then he spent several weeks, I can't remember exactly, but several weeks in the hospital after that. And he had, it was almost intensive care for most of that time. Then he came home and he spent two, two and a half months, you know, as a kid, time goes... But it was a long time he spent in a hospital bed, and it was several weeks before he could even get out of that bed and, and walk around the room. It wasn't good. His job was very physical. I mean, he had to be a tough guy, strong guy, in order to do his job. After he got up and about a little bit and started, he tried to start just a little bit. And he had two or three setbacks. And finally, he just said, I can't do it. So he lost the business. We had to sell the house to pay the bills. Just one moment, one moment of distraction changed his whole life, turned it all around. He wasn't a Christian man at the time. But I'll give him credit. He didn't turn bitter. He didn't did get bitter. He didn't give up. You know, the guy, I never heard him blame anything or anybody other than himself. He didn't expect anything from any... He didn't expect... He, he could have taken some government help even back in those days. He said, no. He said, nobody's going to do that. I'm not going to do that. He took a job that was so much lower than what he had, so much less in pay than he had, but he was determined to get through that. You know, in footballs, sometimes the ball takes weird bounces, and it goes in unexpected directions, and it can change the whole complexion of a game. And on that November day in 1957, the ball of life sure bounced against my dad. And even though he wasn't a Christian, he did. He picked himself up and he moved forward. And for years, I watched this for years. Life was a struggle for him. A struggle physically, of course. It was emotionally, financially, and even spiritually. Because that guy, man, we were hounding him all the time from the Christian point of view. And he was fighting against God continually. He would not give in. He would not give in. 
But at the same time, the guy had a peace about it. He wasn't a grumbler. He wasn't a complainer about what life had thrown at him. He just took it and just kept moving on. He had his pain. He had all the physical ill effects of what happened, the limitations from the accident. And I'm sure there were times, although I didn't hear, but I'm sure way down deep, he many times asked why. You know, none of us, none of us know our, how our ball of life will bounce. You know that? We, we just won't know. Sometimes it bounces our way. Sometimes it doesn't. So what do you do? So what do you do in that? How do we prepare ourselves for what might happen down the road? Can we prepare ourselves for that? You know, do you just walk around all the time expecting the unexpected? <laughs> That's kind of walking in fear, isn't it? I don't think God, I mean, in the back of your mind, you always realize something could happen. But I'm not going around looking, and unex uh, looking for and expecting the unexpected. I'm walking around trusting God. I don't think God wants us to walk in fear. And that's not what this sermon is all about. God wants us to enjoy our life. Jesus says, in me, you may have peace. You may have peace today in the good times, but you can still have peace tomorrow in the bad times. In me, you have peace. In this world, now the world situation out there, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Ah, I think that's the answer I need. So I think the best way to stay prepared is putting our trust in the one who himself has overcome. As I follow his way, as I put my hand in his hand, as I walk with him each and every day, I may not like what's going to happen tomorrow. I may not like what may happen down the road. But I'm still trusting him, believing him to get me through. I'm going to follow him completely. See, Paul didn't know how much longer he was even being able to minister. He didn't know how much longer his life would be out there. Of course, in reality, I don't want to scare you, but in reality, we don't know how much longer we're going to live. We never know. But he didn't know how much time he had but at the same time, he was determined to do all he could for as long as he could. He wanted to serve the Lord, period. Serious question here. I didn't like asking myself this one. How much of our valuable time do we waste on non-essential or non-kingdom things? How much time do we waste on that? Okay. Chew on the thought. Chew on it a little bit. Let's keep things in balance. We need times of rest. We need times of relaxation. You know, God wants us to enjoy life. He says it's an abundant life. He wants us to enjoy life. I'm not saying throw all the fun out of your life. Stick your nose in that theological book. Learn and study and, and just forget the world. No. That's not what the Bible teaches us at all. We, God wants us to enjoy the life we live in Him. He wants us to have, at times, just plain fun. Okay? Tonight, I'm going to watch the Super Bowl. Lord willing. Of course, I don't know what's going to happen in the next few hours, you know. But Lord willing, and isn't that what they, the Bible tells us to do? If the Lord's will, I will do such and such. So, I'm planning on... I'm hoping to watch the Super Bowl tonight. Now, we all have to work. We all have to, and as I said, we need those times of play. But I think there's a balance, and I think the Bible gives us the balance. It says, seek first the kingdom. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom. And when we do that, then everything else is going to take care of itself. 
if my number one purpose is to serve God and I'm seeking him with all my heart, then I will have, enjoy the pleasure. I'll even enjoy the work I have to do, the job I have, if God is still the Lord of all and first in my life. My life will be, as I said earlier, fulfilled. And if I seek him first, I have the promise that he will take care of me, come what may. You know, if you're seeking him, if you're seeking him first, if you're obeying his spirit, the words of Joshua are good for you. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, when he was telling them that, they were going to fight battles against a whole bunch of armies that were larger than them, better equipped than them, more experienced than them. He was telling them, be of good courage and go, because the Lord is going with you. And we're out there in the world, and we have that same promise. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He goes with us wherever we go. I think we can add that to that, and, and the Bible says don't add or subtract, but this is the other biblical principles that go along with it. And whatever you go through, he'll be there. Whatever happens, he'll be there. So, what's tomorrow going to bring? What's going to, tomorrow going to be for you? Huh? I don't know what the stock market's going to do tomorrow. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect me that much, but it'll affect a lot of people. I don't know what my health will be next week. I don't know what dumb idea some politician will come up with to make my life more miserable. You know? There's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen. But this is one thing I do know. I know the one who knows tomorrow says simply here again it is so simple and so hard he simply says trust me trust me Whew. how can I trust him well the more I know him the more the closer I get to him the more exper I, I have experiences with him and know what he can do and see what he can do and realize what he's done the trust comes a whole lot easier. I'm not, I'm not able to trust him when I'm sitting in the back and complaining, oh Lord, what can I do? I can't do this, I can't do Did you see what that person did to me? Do you, do you know what? I, I lost this over here, Lord. You know, if we're going like that. But when I get to know him and get my eyes centered on him, when I get to know him through his word and, and read his word. Jeremiah, I wish I'd have wrote, wrote it down this morning while I was getting ready. I had Jeremiah made a perfect statement and I thought, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> but it was the perfect statement and I, but it goes right along with this. Get to know him and once you know him, it's a whole lot easier to trust him. Oh, I get so mad at my brain. You also need to remember, I'm almost done. We also need to remember we have an enemy out there. Let's put it in football terms. He wants us to fumble. He wants to make us fumble. He wants to hit that ball and make us fumble and fall and fail. That's what he's, that's his main job. That's why the Bible teaches stay on full alert. Remain ready, fully prepared. And keep this in mind. No matter what the next play is. No matter even if the coach calls the wrong play. Even if I do the wrong thing. Keep us in mind. You have three blockers in front of you. Three blockers. You've got the Father, you've got the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what we need to do is grab that ball and follow them through the, to the end zone and into victory. Let them lead the way and be willing to follow where they block. You just don't never know what tomorrow holds. 
of what our, men, um, our enemy will try. That's, that's true, but God does. <laughs> and God never says, oops, I didn't see that coming. I didn't expect that. No, he never says that. He's there for us in our ex unexpected times with a path that he's already prepared. And he says, follow me. Let's be like Paul, willing to follow the Lord's leading with the determination to finish. Finish our life with joy. And we can when we follow him. Lord, we're just thankful for your word. We're thankful for how it speaks to us. Sometimes it cuts. And it's cutting away things that shouldn't be in our life. Sometimes it builds up. It encourages. It strengthens. Sometimes it shows us the way that we should walk. It shows us how to trust. Lord, that's why we need to stay in your word. That's why we need to follow you wherever you lead. So help us. And Lord, when those unexpected times hit, help us just to grab a hold, firmer hold of your hand and keep on walking. Walking in faith. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. <laughs> to say once again thank you so much for letting me come and share God's word with you I do enjoy coming to Archer and and visiting with you guys the Lord bless you may the strength of God sustain you the power of God lead you may the hands of God protect you may the way of God direct you may the love of God go with you this day and forever amen amen the Lord bless you
doesn't believe it. No, nothing. No, nothing.